one. I've got CNET audio genius Ty Pendleberry here to talk about the Amazon Echo Studio and answer your questions. Stay tuned for your good daily charge. Go again. Welcome to the Daily Charge. It's Wednesday, November 6th. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Ty Pendleberry. And here are today's top stories. CNET's review for Amazon Echo Studio Speaker is out today, and here are some quick details to get you started. It's $200, it's really big right here, and it includes Dolby Atmos, which is apparently a thing. But Ty, is it any good? It's very good, actually. Uh, not surprisingly, I mean, obviously Amazon has been in the audio space for five years now. This is actually the fifth anniversary, pretty much, of the original Amazon Echo. So this is the fourth or fifth iteration of that speaker we don't actually have the original echo but it's about you know about that tall yeah yeah a pringles can yeah so this is this looks like a subwoofer it's huge this does not look like a speaker you would sit on your kitchen cabinet or something this is this is a hefty piece of equipment nice well since we have it here let's test it out okay all right i'm going now to... it, it's works terribly for me i know obviously Amazon i wonder why is in the australian market but it just does not understand me at all so okay so should i say something go for it all right i we tested this out earlier alexa play 3d music the playlist here we go Best of 3d music on amazon music So what you should be hearing there, listeners, is uh, 3D audio just going everywhere. So what we'll, – we'll, we'll turn this – Alexa, stop. So what's happening here is this is the first Atmos and 3D audio speaker in a, in a single box. Atmos is a surround sound standard. Uh, the biggest thing about it is that it has a ceiling-mounted uh, audio capability. So what's in here – I don't know which camera I'm pointing to, but this here is a speaker. It's a it's a driver. It's got, uh, I think it's a two inch there, two inch there, two inch there. So what it's doing is it's firing audio up and to the sides to make this 3D audio I remember sound. this. So when I was in Seattle, when they first announced this, the demo room afterwards, they played me Rocket Man in a relatively small room. And they were like, oh, do you hear like the riffs like shooting up over <laughs> your head into the ceiling? And admittedly, I don't know that much about audio. That's why you're here. Right. But I was like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but anyway, it did, it, it was from, from your review specifically, it really did fill the room. It was mm-hmm. a rather compact room and for, one small speaker, uh, it, it, it to me, well, one big speaker, it, it really to me did seem to to do the job, which is, you know, kind of what your review specifically said, talking about the fact that it's that it's big, it's fun, it's loud. Maybe it's not as nuanced or as chill right. as the Sonos one, but right. at the same time, they seem to do a really good job with what they were trying to get at, which was big sound. Right. And I do wonder who would be buying this and where they would be putting it. Mm-hmm. So I'll be very interested. It goes on sale tomorrow, two hundred dollars, and it's I think it's one eighty nine pounds in the UK. Uh, I think Australia's launch is a bit later. But what would people be buy- be buying this for? The idea is, you know, it's got three D audio. It's got Dolby Atmos, but you can only get Atmos in if you have a Fire TV Stick four K or the Fire TV Cube. So you need an actual dongle on your TV to get Dolby Atmos to come through this. So, but that also means is that you can hook this up to your TV, and it acts as a sound bar. So that's do that's you want to get it with the sub too, or is it already pretty bassy or uh, whatever? It's not that great. I mean, the thing is, once the bass activates, um, there's a balancing act. When you're in a compact speaker like this, what they usually do is they they kind of can the bass a little bit so it doesn't distort. So when there's a lot of other stuff going on, the bass kind of drops out a little bit. So if you had the sub, you'd still get that full bass. Which is interesting that you mentioned that because this is already a giant honking speaker. (laughs) And then the sub is also a slightly smaller version of this. No, it's bigger. It's even bigger? It's even bigger, So you've got to find somewhere to put this stuff. Right. So because it's such an awkward shape, you wouldn't put it underneath your TV. Hmm. But the idea is you can pair this with another one. That becomes then 400 bucks. And put them on the sides of your TV and make it a surround sound system. Okay. Or something I mean, approximating it. The price sounds good. Right. Sure. Uh, but then in that territory, there is a fantastic Vizio uh, SB512 
to 36. Ugh, the I'm name just making just up rolls the model, off your, you making know. up the model number, but essentially it's a $450 Atmos soundbar, which will kick butt of this thing. Yeah. Because well, it's got dedicated uh, rear speakers. So speaking of which, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on wasn't just to talk about this specific speaker, but, you know, especially going into Black Friday, Cyber Monday, what are some of the best things that people should look at when they're thinking of getting a speaker or a soundbar? Obviously, smart speakers are where it's at. You know, having Alexa or, which I think is better for me and people with accents, is, is Google Assistant because you can talk to it, you can ask it for music, you can ask it to close the blinds, you can ask it to do a bunch of things. And obviously, this is the you know preeminent model at the moment. So the Sonos One is more fun. It's also more compact and can sit on your bench or whatever. And it also includes two different kinds of right. smart so you, assistants. And you can use your phone to control it. This is only voice. Hmm. Um, you can't use Spotify or you know Apple AirPlay or anything like that. You have to use your voice, which limits this a lot. Uh, but there's a bunch of different soundbars, speakers that all have voice activation. Obviously, you know the sky's the limit. You can spend a hundred bucks, you can spend a hundred thousand dollars, but you know spending more doesn't always mean that you're going to get a better experience. You're just going to get a different one. So, so I think it's about working out your budget and working out what you want to do with it, and then you know take it from there. Let's talk really quickly also about what your favorite like budget soundbars are. I feel like this is like a perennial thing that I ask you about right. that I haven't quite yet purchased. So I, I need tell my, me now. my role of uh, particularly Vizio uh, soundbar names. It's all basically the width and then five one two and I, so I, I didn't come with those prepared. It's okay. You basically <laughs> look for Vizio. Right, yeah. Vizio make great uh, budget soundbars. There's a $100 model, which is just a skinny bar. kind of looks like a Toblerone or something out of Blade Runner. It's got like a, this sort of hexagonal honeycomb thing is going on. Sounds delicious. There, it is. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> and there's another one that's uh, it's their $130 soundbar and subwoofer. Um, and that's basically all you need. Nice. Um, it, I haven't he put this head-to-head -head against any soundbars yet, but I'm pretty sure that anything that goes out wide um, and has a dedicated subwoofer will sound pretty good. And there's lots of models. There's uh, the uh, YAS209, which is a Yamaha soundbar. That's a little bit more expensive. That's about 350 bucks. should work on the names of these things. Yeah, I mean, they're not, you know... At least Sonos goes, okay, it's the one or it's the connect or it's just got a, a, a catchy name. Whereas some of these other, you know, companies could do with a bit more marketing, I guess. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, it, it depends on what you want to spend. But something like the HomePod, which is a little bit smaller than this, the Apple HomePod. I, you know, you, you probably have more of an idea about how that's selling at the moment because I don't, I think they're way down. You know, in the, in the smart speaker market, yeah. they're they're like five percent of the smart speaker right. market, which is Amazon still okay is, because these guys yeah. have like 60, 70 percent. Correct. Yeah, and then it's Google Assistant, and then Cortana probably has 0.1 percent. Yeah, not really. So <laughs> right, but either way, I, I kind of want to open this up for questions. Now we got through a lot of information just now, so we're going to stop there and see what the viewers on YouTube, Twitter, and Periscope have to say. Uh, for you new fans out there. What we do is we list the headlines at the top of each show and then spend a good amount of time afterwards answering your questions and expanding further on the day's stories. It helps us really learn about what our audience is more interested in when it comes to our coverage here at CNET. So anyway, if you have any burning questions or thoughts, please share them now. BVG, tell us what we've got for today. Ty, you already touched on this, but Timothy was asking if you can pair the studio for stereo sound. How many can you daisy chain? You said you can get that stereo feel by bundling the, them together in your entertainment center, but yeah, uh, we how been many? Able to get our hands on a second unit yet, but that will be coming. We did hear that at the Dolby Soho uh, experience, I guess it's called. They showed off these two running in stereo. I think it's you know as with any stereo pairing at the start, it's a bit wonky. Um, because they've got to be perfectly in sync or else it kind of sounds phasey and weird. So they're probably still perfecting that and probably why they didn't want to give me a second one. <laughs> but, I mean, that happened with everything that, that can be stereo paired. Like Sonos did that at the start. Um, the Google speakers did that. Um, so they're probably still honing it. But, you know, once it works, uh, yeah, it's, it's a $400 home theater slash 
stereo system. So yeah, I guess to a certain extent, answering kind of the question that we posed earlier, as far as like what consumers would actually want this, if you've got space to a certain extent for a HomePod, a HomePod is a very similar shape to this, mm. even though this is bigger, then you could in theory get this too. And I would argue that um, Lady A is <laughs> more uh, uh, versatile than Siri, but obviously right. I would agree with you that the Google Assistant is by far the best one right. uh, that, that you would find. So, and I, and I guess at that point, if you want something that's similar in the Google Assistant world, I guess you could get a Sonos speaker or they've also got their, um, what is it called? The, the Home Max. Max. Yeah. The Home Max, which is also big. Yeah, it is big. It's about that wide. It, this sounds a bit better, actually, than the Interesting. than the Max because that's very uh, sibilant sounding. It they pump the highs, so it sounds very exciting. This sounds a bit more neutral and natural. Hmm. So I mean, it's still Sonos is even warmer and a bit better for rock or dance or pop or anything like that. This is probably great for choral music or you know things that are huge sounding. Well, yeah, you you tested ba Mad Max Fury Road, right. which is which I kind of feel really speaks to uh, the sweet spot for this specific uh, equipment. Yeah, there's like uh, scene three or four where um, the the bad guy is basically talking to the assembled masses in a big canyon, and this was bouncing you know, sound off all of the walls. It sounded like I was in a canyon. It's, it was quite that a sounds cool, cool. Effect. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely going to get much better sound than my rinky dink um, <laughs> TV speaker. So. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, as an upgrade for any TV, really 200 bucks is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, but you do have to have the fire TV stick, a recent model with 4k to, to use that. So how much does environment come into play on this when it's actually using the walls and your surrounding ceiling and whatnot to bounce that sound? Is it, if you got a tiny apartment, does it throw things off? Is it smart enough to understand its physical space? Yeah, so this is actually designed to be in a small space. Something large like this studio, uh, because it needs a wall to bounce the sound off and back at you. If you have a cavernous room, it's probably not going to sound very good. If you have a small space, you know, say 10 foot by 10 foot or, or equivalent size, it's going to sound great because this actually calibrates, not when you move it, but... It supposedly does a couple of calculations every minute to just determine where the walls are and it uses the onboard microphones. So the smaller the space, funnily enough, for such a huge speaker, the better it will probably sound. Interesting. Bazzer1955 says, I have this coming tomorrow. Bazzer, keep us posted. We want to know what your experience is. Are you an audiophile and how does this thing stack up against what other sound and speakers you're using? Um, go ahead and tweet at us. We just and, and that goes for anybody else too. Let us know uh, what your experience is with uh, the home. It, it, what's it's called? The it's just called the studio, right? The, the I don't Deco know. It's the studio. home home something. The uh, yeah. I know it's the Echo Studio. The... I'm kidding. I'm You're kidding. Right. <laughs> it's the it's the Echo Pro Max Home Goodness Eleven. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad we cleared that up for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy wants to know, and Ty, this is good. Uh, we've actually got a lot of uh, smart audio files in our audience oh, good. space right All now. Right. So I'm they've just going to take questions. a break. <laughs> Tim <laughs> Timothy ahead. asks, I understand Atmos has the huge following and all, but does it have DTS HD MA, Master Audio? I think it's only got Dolby. So it's got Dolby, basically Dolby Digital. It may have Dolby Master, not Dolby Master Audio. The mid-level Dolby and then Dolby Atmos. It's whatever comes out of your streaming services. So whether it's Vudu or whether it's Netflix, whatever they support. It's not going to connect to a Blu-ray player, <laughs> so you won't get anything out of that. It does have, though, a uh, at the back, a auxiliary in slash optical, which will accept Dolby uh, Digital as well, I believe. Uh, but it will definitely accept PCM through there. So it's just going to come out in stereo probably. Got it. Uh, let's talk about price a little bit. Uh, Utpal is asking what is the price, and we already said the base price is 200 bucks, right? Yep. So uh, when you start bundling anything in, is that 200 bucks include the subwoofer? What's the no, kind of like... No, that's what's the kind of coin... Guy. What's Quite the kind of coin affordable? you're going to spend to like build this into your entertainment center? I was saying a perfect world to get a pair of these for your stereo sound and a woofer, and what else can you even include and how much you're going to wind up spending? Yeah, so if you wanted to get the full set, at the moment it doesn't support rears, um, and presumably at some point they're going to incorporate, say, you add a couple of Echo Pluses in the rears and make it a 5.2, uh, 5.1 set. But at the moment what it supports is two of these in the front 
and a subwoofer. The subwoofer is actually the most affordable. It's 130 bucks, um, and it is quite large. As I say, we haven't had a chance to test that because it still doesn't work. It's supposed to go live tomorrow. So I don't know what that will do, but you can buy that sub for any of the other Echo speakers. And so you're talking well. about, okay, prior to tax, all in, you're talking about, let's say you wanted surround sound, so you get two of these on either side, right. and then the subwoofer, you're talking $530. Right. Now, from what you said, from a budget perspective, at least for sound bars, right. Uh, you, you would look at a Vizio, which already includes a subwoofer. That's and rear like, speakers. And rear speakers. And is, Atmos, yeah. How much? Uh, 450. 450. Right. For, there are even cheaper uh, uh, for, uh, Vizio setups, though, right? Right, yeah. For I mean, like 150 get, or something? Exactly. So you can start at 150 and get, you know, it won't have surround, but it will have very good TV sound. The problem with this is it doesn't have HDMI. So you're not going to get... It's got, it's got to be whatever comes out of your Fire TV sticks. So you're not going to be able to plug, as we just said, we're not going to be able to plug a Blu-ray player or a console or anything into this unless you use the auxiliary input. Uh, so it's, it's, it's anything that's coming via a streaming service, whereas a soundbar has multiple inputs. You can switch them. I mean, you can ask Alexa to say, you know, switch to auxiliary or whatever, but it's a lot less flexible. So if you want a dedicated home theater system, I wouldn't start here. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is great for like a TV room or something. Uh, might be okay for gaming. I haven't tried that. But it doesn't have that, that positional thing that you need for gaming. Like if someone's creeping up behind you, you might hear like this sound. You're not going to hear it's a little fuzzier. someone yeah. coming out of the, the right left speaker. Right. And because the price is basically the same as the Sonos One, right. your suggestion is you should at least consider looking at the Sonos One yeah. before purchasing either one of these. Yeah. I mean, this has a very specific... Uh, purpose you know it's, it's a tv speaker with with a bit of audio uh, music thing thrown in whereas the sonos one is a music speaker you're not going to use it. you can't plug it into a tv so this is a bit more of a uh, all-rounder mm. uh, but if you want multi-room music or if you want to be able to use the google assistant it's not the best obviously gotcha Next question is coming in from Scott. Uh, again, we've kind of brushed on this. Scott, congratulations. Enjoy your new Echo Studio when it arrives tomorrow. Same deal, like I mentioned before. Sound off to us. Let us know what your experience is. He was wondering if it works in a bedroom. Sounds like that is kind of the ideal situation here. Um, so Ty, what I'm getting from it is bedroom. you're kind of actually impressed at the effort it's making to get the fullness of sound with such a, a limited physical space. Is that is that kind of your takeaway? Yeah, well, it, it does have a lot better bass than, say, the Echo Plus or even the original Echo because it's, it's a bigger speaker. It actually has a 5.25-inch woofer in the bottom, whereas, obviously, when you stuck it into a little tube, you just can't generate any bass out of that. So this would sound in, uh, really good in the bedroom. Uh, obviously, with a smaller room like that, it can bounce off the walls. You're not going to be able to get a stereo approximation, obviously, unless you stick it in front of your bed, but... You know, it'll it'll generate a lot of sound within the room, and you can walk around, and and it will be good good background listening for sure, definitely. Uh, a couple of listeners are curious about us doing uh, an actual audio test. I don't know if we can really convey that all that well here on the podcast, yeah. um, just because we don't have dedicated lines set up to capture the audio in its truest lossless form well, from it. To but... test like like a versus with something else. Well, I'm sure eventually we'll do that. Uh, as a video production at CNET. Uh, but for right now, just here sitting here today. I don't know, Ty, is there anything else we can kind of demo? Can we see how loud it can get? Apologies uh, in advance. Sure. We can I mean, we, do we that. Can, it will get up to 90 decibels. So it means that it will, which is basically reference level, that's theater level. Uh, it will probably blow out our microphone so I do that. But I mean, I can, I can get her to play some, say, white noise or something. Anyone got any royalty free stuff we can play and uh, demonstrate how loud this oh, thing yeah. is pvg what anything like should we focus on royalty free or whatever i mean you could play my old band but you're gonna scare the pants off of everybody i would love to do that alexa play bvg's old band I'm, i don't know if that's gonna work <laughs> <laughs> no she just sometimes she just no ty, she's not gonna do that it's like uh, I, I don't know about uh, that one yeah if we're going down this road ty play the red death Alexa, play the Red Death at maximum volume. See what happens. I didn't catch the other thing you said. Alexa, play the Red Death. Here we go. Sit back. 
That's pointing straight at you. Red Orbit Remix by Ill Vibe from Spotify. Like, Let's what? just go with it. <laughs> no, nope. you said here we go. Oh, okay. It's going to be loud. Or not. It's it's sometimes deciding today to not play Oh, it just doesn't want to. It's still, I mean, it's the product is not actually out yet. Well, no, it could be. It's on a different work network to usual, so it could be just some weirdness there. Well, but. That was that was anticlimactic. So let's try one more time. What were you playing before? Hey, hey, Alexa, play the best of 3D music. I'm gonna sit back. This is 3D from Spotify. Here we go. Is it though? Yeah. No. I'm gonna try. Alexa. Alexa, play 3D music. The playlist: best of 3D music on I'm, Amazon. Music. I've got the touch. I mean, like this might sound terrible on YouTube, but I'm not yeah, sure. No, it's pretty. Loud. It's pretty loud here. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, wait, wait for the bass. Oh, not quite yet. All right, so this is vibrating. Alexa, stop. See, oh, uh, see, that's pretty cool. That's pretty good. I, you can sit. Ty, you got to get back closer, closer to the mic. To this mic. There we go. You can sit at least six foot away, and you don't whisper, but if you talk in a normal voice, even when it's going at full volume like that, it hears you. Yes. Uh, and that's the most impressive thing about this machine is that the microphones. It's got seven of them. You can sort of see the little divots. Um, and it's it works better than pretty much any other uh, speaker that I've tried like this um, in that you don't have to shout at it, um, even though it doesn't understand you anyway. <laughs> That's like the whatever other it issue. just said or interpreted me to say, um, it still hears that you're trying to issue a command, which is right. really cool. Right. And g going back to my time in Seattle when they were first demoing this to me, uh, one of the executives, Miriam Daniel, was very proud of that aspect that they said they spent a lot of time working on making sure that you didn't have to yell across the room because obviously they wanted to make sure that you could play it loud because right. that was the whole idea of this particular device. Mm. And it, it, it takes you out of the experience or the moment or the enjoyment of it to then just scream across the room <laughs> to be like, stop playing. P particularly with something that can only be controlled by voice exactly you right can't. so so they seem to have hit that point really well especially with the first iteration of this however as we said and as you mentioned on your review um it, lady a still has some work to do as far <laughs> as as far as getting things right um with with just generally understanding people and i think it's working in that direction but it is frustrating how long that does take right and google has the advantage you know they've got a lot more programming they've got a lot more you know, uh, engineers working on that product. You know, you know they, they've got a huge organization. They both do. They both yeah. do, but the voice recognition at this point, I think, right. is, you know, the, Google has the edge at this point. So yeah. either way, uh, PVG, do we have more questions? Should oh, plenty. Wrap? What's going on? Plenty more questions. In terms okay. of equalization. <laughs> let's, let's do it. Let's go how, about, how about an audio file question? Have you got anything like that? We do. In terms of equalization, is there any customization while listening to music? Any customization of this? Like, is yeah, sound the sound modes? Yeah. Not that I've seen, no. Uh, there should be. You'd think that something that can play home theater and can play music would have sound modes. They may integrate this or maybe buried deep in a menu somewhere, but not that I've seen so far. I think you can play with the EQ. I'd have to look at the app again. Yeah, it's... It's not something we had time to delve into. But. That's certainly not something that I've noticed from having Echo speakers in my house. Right. You, you, They're like, this is what it is. Right. It, 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 this much. is what you've got. Obviously, the Echo Dot, uh, the the better versions or the newer versions, they've they've improved from being really tinny, almost smartphone right. speakers. Uh, but they're not so sophisticated to the point of having sound modes, yeah. at least those smaller ones. It, I wouldn't be surprised if they started to do something along those lines with something like this, which is more like a pro model, but yeah. um, I haven't heard of that yet. But, I, you know, they tweak these things and they have a lot of engineering and, uh, you know, sound-specific modes that if you start playing with the bass, you know, that the problem we were talking about before, you can overload the bass and make it distort and it sounds terrible. So... They probably want to limit the amount of customization so you don't screw up your speaker. Okay, how about offline mode? Is there any semblance of an offline mode? 
there is Bluetooth. So if you don't, if you're not connected to the net, you can connect to it via Bluetooth, <laughs> and then you start opening it up to apps, and you can control it that way. Um, obviously, you don't have to use your voice then; you can just use whatever app and, and play to it f- from your phone. Cheers to Brian, who says, "I'm a third-party Alexa dev." Sorry, I said the word, Lady A. Uh, okay, <laughs> we, they, we prepared. Yeah, he was we, saying we're the, muted. It's okay. He's saying the devices often force you to set the equalization in the app on your phone, which makes a lot of sense. I vague, I mean, that's how I do it with like uh, I've got a, a a Bose speaker at home, um, so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, next question. We only have a few minutes left. Let's see how many we can fly through here. Uh, does the Echo Studio have some automation features like Z-Wave or Zigbee support? Yes, I believe it has. I'm not the home automation guru, but it does have, uh, it is a home base. It can work uh, and operate, you know, other Z-Wave, I believe it has. um, Whatever the other uh, Plus has, it has as far as home automation. Um, I don't have the list in front of me, but um, yeah, that's something we could definitely look into. Uh, I'll ask our uh, Kentucky colleagues. They will be able to tell you all about it. Got it. Uh, as far as the power wire goes, uh, can you remove that? A lot of the speakers are just kind of like, you know, bolted yeah. on there. And uh, what kind is it if you can? It is the typical, what is this? The We have a different name for it in Australia, but this is, we call it a, a figure eight, but it's what, I eight, is that what it's called? I don't know. I'm sorry. I was just going to call it a Chaz Wazer, which Chaz is an Wazer. old, it's an old Simpsons horror. joke. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So it just has the little figure eight thing. I mean, um, that's pretty common. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Not, it's a not super thing. specific. Yeah. Common AC. That's Doesn't it. have a battery either, so you can't tote it around with you. Got it. <laughs> why you, why you some, would want some to? Some of them do. I don't know. Some of them do. There's a new uh, Bose home speaker that's uh, 250 bucks. Is there a say. reason why this is the open ports? in the back? Oh. No, no. Like this this thing right here. So that's a that's a port, uh, so a base port. Um, so when the base is going really crazy, you can see the actual driver which is in there go yeah yeah it goes um but it yeah it's essentially to make the deep uh the base deeper gotcha yep uh and look cool brian says he's curious if money was no object what is the best sound bar uh he's got a bose Ooh, with this deep is an discounts question because uh, i just tested a two and a half thousand dollar sennheiser ambio sound what bar, and it's it was good it was really good uh any of these things, you know, this does it too. Anything that's designed to bounce off walls back at you isn't really able to replicate stuff coming behind you. But this Ambio soundbar was the best I've heard of any any soundbar really of any price that it can get. It got to about there, halfway through my head. So anything that's designed to come from behind your head, kind kind of came from there, and that's that's the best I've heard. Uh, it, it had Atmos, it had lots of, you know, streaming features, um, and that's it, the, the Sennheiser Ambio. I've heard the, there's a $5,000 creative soundbar because Good everyone grief. wants, you know, creative, the PC audio mm-hmm. people. Um, I didn't, okay, yes, <laughs> apparently they make <laughs> They make a $5,000 soundbar, and the, the subwoofer was this, it looked like a mini fridge. Mm. It was huge and had swirling lights and stuff. That didn't sound as good as the... Soundbar that was half the price. You heard it here, folks. There you go. Just a, a low, low price of $2,500 <laughs> for a soundbar. Go there get it go. right now. For more feature questions, Timothy wants to know, with the Google Home Mini, you can broadcast a message for someone at home while you're away. Is that a feature that is included in the Echo ecosystem? That you can uh, send messages. I don't know if it's within the home or away from home. I don't have an Alexa system at home, but I know you can do it on Google. So, and I'd be so very surprised I, if you I can't. could probably answer this. Yeah. So there are a number of ways that you could do that. So there's the drop-in features. There's the intercom feature. Um, there's also the um, just the general echo calling feature where you can call from an echo or you can call somebody through your echo or to somebody's echo, I think. Usually I, you know, use the echo speaker to, you know, call my wife or something. Mm-hmm. So... It's not usually the other way around, but you could definitely do a drop in from somewhere else. Uh, another thing that you could do is just set a reminder for a different part of the day. So that's something that you could do if you wanted to like leave a message for somebody for later, you could do it that way. So there are, I, I mean, as far as feature sets, a lot of these companies have been around for a while doing this. Like you said, 
the echo has been around for five years. So there's, there are a number of ways to, to get at what you're looking to do, Tim. All right. And as we're here at the end, uh, before we do let everyone go, Ty, are there any interesting, unique features beyond what you get as a normal echo user? Is there anything besides the enhanced hardware inside the studio that it does enhance the sound, enhance the functionality? Are there any other features that you see with the home studio? Uh, yeah, so the ones we, we discussed at the start, so the Dolby Atmos integration, so the ability to connect to a Fire TV stick and basically you play a movie and you'll have sound effects bouncing off the side and the ceiling above you. That's something that pretty much no other smart speaker can do and very few soundbars are designed to integrate with televisions can do that either. It also has, as you mentioned, improved connectivity similar to the Echo Plus. So you are gonna get slightly better hardware like guts inside right. as far as smart home connectivity as opposed to the Echo Dot or the, just the regular Echo. Yeah, so the Z-Wave stuff. Exactly. Uh, you know, obviously all of these can connect to, you know, a, a Alexa-based smart home system but yeah this has extra little bits inside it that can work as a hub mm. in your home but obviously uh one of the things we haven't talked about is that um sony has this new standard called 3d real 360 reality audio just say that quickly uh so the thing that we we're listening to before the best of 3d audio is that so what people have done is in a studio mixed it in an atmos like uh situation so you've got Cowbell coming from here, guitar coming from up here. So this is designed to mimic that in your home without having a surround sound setup. I don't think that's the best reason to buy this speaker. It's kind of cool. You know, we heard whatever song that was before and yeah. it sounded a little bit bigger. But that's the thing. It sounds bigger. It doesn't sound discreet. It doesn't sound like you've got things bouncing off around you. Yeah. If, um, if, it works a lot better for If you for really want audio. something like that, you're probably going to want different speakers. Right. You're going to want separate speakers because... Right sounds like to me a lot of these uh single speakers are trying to get as close to that as possible but right. there's no substitute for having different pieces of physical hardware right. set up on either side of you behind you yeah i did hear i think it was a five thousand dollar headphone rig um it was in a surround i sat in the middle i had speakers around me they turned the speakers on and off when i took my the headphones off mm. that was the only time that i've been convinced that there's something coming from behind me in a pair of headphones interesting and these are doing a similar thing just fooling your ear you know using you know psychoacoustics to simulate something coming from behind you but nothing in the real world can really simulate that yet unless they know the the ins and outs of your room and i'm sure there's a, a rig somewhere where they know the back wall of the room intimately and can bounce sound off it Hmm. But nothing you'll get in a $200 device will simulate that. Awesome. Uh, before we shut it down, we do have a request. We do have to get this thing to play something with bass. Can we get a, one more demo where we see the bass go into a action? Oh, you want to see the speaker? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, we want, we want this sucker. Um, hey, Google. Oh, here we go. Oh, come hey, on. Google. <laughs> By the way, on. well, that reminds me. I've been Your calling expert it, level Alexa, is just ruined. I've been play calling it, Life by Beta Band. I've been calling it home studio all day because I'm an idiot. Playing so. the beta band by the beta band from Spotify. No, that's hey. not what I wanted. Life by beta band? Yeah. Except it's not. Like, it's not. It, it wants to play the best of 3D audio, and that's yeah, all it wants to play it today. Wants to do. I don't think it's connecting well. Go for Spotify. it. Just let, let it get to the base. Time. Alexa, play Life by beta band. No. Life by the beta band Here from Spotify. Maybe. It's not doing a good job with Spotify. Yeah. It's it's like basically waiting on Spotify. Alexa, play a 50 hertz tone. Ooh, that's specific. I can't find the song 50 hertz tone <laughs> uh, on Spotify. Okay. Alexa, Ty, just play the 3D audio. Play 50 hertz. White noise 250 hertz. One <laughs> maybe this will work. with no fade by best noise from Spotify. Okay, uh -oh. maybe that'll do something. I don't know if we got a camera that can see that. But yeah, but you, it just said Spotify at the end, which, oh, which is so why it's, it's preventing. It. Alexa, play the best of 3D. <laughs> it doesn't this even want that. from Spotify. Oh, no, no, uh, it's not going to do that. No. Let me help you out this here. Is, this is scintillating it's stuff okay. here. <laughs> Alexa, play music. 
Here is Spotify. Oh, oh no! My God. Oh, ah! <laughs> Boiled again. Why is Spotify so broken? It's it's just not connecting properly. Yeah, it to just Spotify. doesn't like Spotify. And and this, I would say morning. that this is this is like specific to our setup. Right. To a certain extent, this is not like this device is messed up. It's because no. we're, we're connecting it to the Wi-Fi. Right. I had know, to restart the Wi-Fi, and so it's probably not connecting to my Spotify account. That's yeah. probably why. So the, like, do not do not like now. It's not indicative of the not, end quality yeah, of this product. Right. It's desperately trying to connect to Spotify. Good work. You're you're trying. Yeah. All right. Well, trying. we're gonna have to cut this short. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna, but we're gonna good call effort. It. Everyone. We did some demoing. There we go. But it goes. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm just gonna yeah. imitate it. Right. I, That's the best like simulation that. we can offer. Like. Like. <laughs> okay. Let's take it on out, Ben. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe. Ring the bell so you can join us live here every weekday morning. And if you have the chance, peek at the links below to learn more about today's topics. And feel free to subscribe on the audio podcasts too for the Daily Charge. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Ty Pendleberry. Thanks for joining us. Can't get enough? Check out The Daily Supercharge, our extended post show with special features, audience Q&A, and in-depth reviews. Available now wherever you get your podcasts.